going to refresh our memory from what we've learned this week. This week we've been working with the beginning parts of polygons, okay? Who knows what we've learned so far in topics 11.1 and 11.2? What have we been working on? McKenna? Geometry. Geometry. What have we learned so far about geometry? Okay, and specifically in topics 11 and 1 and 11 2, what kind of vocabulary words are we learning about? Polygons. Mm, yeah, polygons we're getting into. We haven't really quite gotten into them yet, but what else? Geometry. We are seeing the children in the beginning of a geometric lesson. The topic in math starts with lines and line segments and then goes into different kinds of lines and then from there active expressions where kids can text answers. This was just a quick way for teachers to be able to assess what the kids know and be able to immediately fix something if somebody was getting it wrong instead of taking papers home at night and not knowing until the evening and then going in the next day and reteaching. You can teach on the spot. The very first thing was the active votes that we did today and we did a quiz on different shapes and we did some parallel lines, acute, and I think the active votes are really good for that because the teachers can go back and see and you don't have to be embarrassed about it. We're going to do just lines and line segments, okay, and the different kind of things that we've learned so far. We're not going to get into the shapes of the polygons yet, okay? So what I would like to do before we answer any of these questions, if you could just check your active vote, push A, B, C, or D, and just see if you're working. There were shapes on the board. They weren't shapes. They were um, types of lines. And... The active vote, see those letters right there? Those letters, we press one of those, and then, but first you press that until those two lights light up. And then you press the letter you think it that the answer is, and then your name turns yellow, and that's when you know, um, the active board got the signal. We have to find ways to make it exciting and make it fun for the kids and bring the technology in so it keeps their interest high because that's what they know. They know their iPads, they know a lot of like the iMovies and stuff. They're teaching me a lot of the things because they're used to it. So if we teach to their world, they're gonna learn a lot easier and be happy learning and be excited about it. You ready to log in your answers? Go ahead. What is it called, everybody? Points. Points, and you got that one. Good job. Okay. The kitty cat says good job, too. All right, next one. Which picture shows a pair of perpendicular line segments? Perpendicular. Who can tell us what it needs to be perpendicular? What does it need to have, Cole? 90 degree, 90 degree angle. They're very fun because I think it's fun to play with technology and our teacher can grade f fast with them because we can just put in our answer and she sees it on her computer and it's really easy. Mrs. Cole likes it because she can go to see if anybody got it wrong and if anybody got it wrong, she can work with them on that topic. Okay, what are these lines called? Are they perpendicular, intersecting, or parallel? Tell us the difference between intersecting and parallel. Cole Kimball. Intersecting crosses. Okay. Why parallel keeps going on forever. Okay, are they crossing anywhere? Are these, are these two lines crossing anywhere? Yes. Okay, so which is, is it intersecting? It's B, intersecting. Parallel, they would not be crossing, right? What is this part called right here? Say it out loud if you know. Point. Point. If they were perpendicular, what would I have had to do instead? I'm a general education teacher. We teach all different subjects in this class. It's self-contained. I have these kids all day. 
and our math curriculum is a basic third grade math curriculum. However, the group that I have is an advanced class, so I have to um, find ways to go deeper into the curriculum. We don't skip grade levels or anything like that, but we just take our curriculum and try to enrich it. Things that the kids can take what they're learning in geometry class and then put it into other aspects of the world. Everybody, take your finger and go like this. Make me a right angle, 90 degrees, right here with your thumb and your fingers. Okay, that's 90 degrees. Now make it cute, a cute angle. It's gonna be smaller than 90 degrees, right? Now it's gonna be hard, but go back to 90. Now try to make it obtuse. Big. I think the curriculum hasn't really changed much. I think we have to teach more uh, of the curriculum in a, in a younger grade level from what we're learning today in third grade, maybe what I learned when I was in fifth or sixth grade. I think if you feel that you're good at it, it's going to make you love math. I think if somebody has ever put you down or you've, if you've gotten poor grades and you don't feel that you're as good in a subject, that's going to make you not like that subject. So I think the more we can do for kids to, to keep them positive by helping them get the grades that they want, it's going to make them like it because they know that they're good at it and keep it fun so that it's more of a game but that it's a challenging game. Kids really do love math. It's, it's just a matter of the way that a teacher presents it and makes sure it's just not paper and pencil and workbooks. Math's really fun because I like, like, Math does a lot of things. It helps with designing, it helps with, like, I think it does a lot of things. So if I like math the most, I probably can have a lot of choices when I grow up to be what, what I want to be. Give yourself a hand. Good job. All right, we're gonna leave our active votes, our eggs up on our desk, okay? And now we're gonna review in a different way. We're gonna play Quiz Quiz Trade. You like that game? And in this bag, there are some cards with these de words on it with the definitions you know. The Quiz Quiz Trade um, is a game where you have your hand up and you have a card in your hand. So just say I had point. Um, I would go and I would touch the person's hand and I would say, do you know what a point is? And they would say, do you know what a parallel line is? And then we would say, great job at the end. So what you're gonna do is with your friend, your partner, if you're gonna ask them if they know what it is. Like the vertex of, vertex of an angle, we may know already, we may not know it. So you can ask your friend if they know it. And if they don't, you're going to help them by explaining it to them. So I'm gonna pass out the cards first. And does everybody remember how to play? Yes. Okay. And don't forget to trade. We always do the quiz quiz and then we forget the trade part, don't we? Sometimes. Make sure you give compliments to your friends and make sure you greet them in a nice way. Please stand up, push in your chair. And then when you hear the bell, if you could at that point just freeze, you can go ahead, lift up your arm and go ahead and start your quiz quiz trade game. That's a game where um, you have a card and your hands up and you walk around the room and you touch somebody's hand. When you touch their hand, you hold up your card and say like, do you know what a line segment is? And they say yes or no, and if they say no, you teach them. And then at the end, tell them that they did good or nice try. Kagan structures are wonderful ways for kids to be involved with each other. I work on a wonderful team here. They're the ones that train me, my own colleagues, and then I use them in my classroom. And this one that we did today was called Quiz Quiz Trade, and it just gets kids up and moving. It gets them excited about it, so they get to socialize with their friends, yet they're teaching each other. And today we did an activity that some of the words they were familiar with, some they were not familiar with, and I did that on purpose so that they could kind of get a jump start and learn from their friends of something that I'm going to teach them this afternoon and tomorrow. I think it's just more hands-on, moving around, socializing, which is what kids love to do. <laughs> so just wonderful strategies that we've learned through different Kagan classes and through colleagues. 
Well, Quiz Quiz Trade is fun because you get to review the stuff that you know and you get to be with your friends and it's just like having a play date. You get to go like you get to go on to the, to them and you get to talk to them about well school stuff and shapes and lines and it's I think it's very fun. I had I think parallel wait no. I think intersecting lines. They cross like this and um they never really get to see each other again. Then you can put like a 90 degree in any corner you want. Thanks for showing me. Very nice good. Job. Okay. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> the third graders that I have are eight and nine years old and they've been together for a long time so socially they're all very familiar with each other. It's a very hard year because it's their first year for FCAT, so it's a very um, high pressure year. Although we would like to have a fun third grade, we have to do fun through the learning because it's constant learning, it's constant on your toes, you know, learning different strategies to help also with the testing at the end of the year, but not focusing just on how to teach to a test. But as long as the teachers can make it fun for them, um, they'll do fine. Correct, but the correct definition is two, two lines that are smaller than a right angle and are connected by a point. You did good. You did too. You thank them at the end because you're trying to get them to know you did an awesome job and I'm so glad that you're in, you're in my class and you're, you're my friend because they want to know that you're their friend and you want to be nice about it. You don't just want to think, oh, I'm the smartest. I just want them to say thank you to me. You have to say thank you even if they got it wrong. I think it's fun for the kid that's teaching because they get to feel like the teacher because some kids, they want to be a teacher when they grow up and it might be a fun like responsibility that they have. They're big into their friends and they want to do things in groups. They don't want to sit at their desk by themselves and do work. They want to get on the floor and be in groups and work together and help each other and support each other. So you have to do a lot of grouping and just let them work in partners and go off on their own and just be a facilitator and walk around and make sure what they're doing is on track. Now we're going to do your favorite thing. You love the polygon song, so let's get your little polygon figures and come on up front. Push in your chair so nobody trips, please. Okay. We like to sing the polygon song to help us with our refreshing of how many sides every shape has, right? Yeah. So we're going to sing with Mr. Polygon. Okay, are we ready? Yes. Na, 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 just a boring square. I wish I was a pentagon, but I am just a square. I wish I was a pentagon, but I am just a square. My sides be equal four, but if I had one more, I'd be a pentagon and not a square. Na 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 na, just a boring square. I wish I was a hexagon, but I am just a square. If I was a hexagon, then I wouldn't care. My sides would equal six, if they were made of sticks, I'd be a hexagon and not a square. I've always been a square, and it just isn't fair, because I've wanted more than sides that equal four. Na, 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 just a boring square. I wish I was a heptagon, but I am just a square. If I was a heptagon, then I wouldn't care. My sides would equal seven, and I would be in heaven if I was a heptagon and not a square. Na, 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 just a boring square. I wish I was an octagon, but I am just a square. If I was an octagon, then I wouldn't care. My sides would equal eight, 
And that would be just great If I was an octagon And not a square I've always been a square And it just isn't fair Because I've wanted more Than sides that equal four Na 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 Just a boring square I wish I was an onagon But I am just a square If I was an onagon Then I wouldn't care My sides would equal nine And that would be just fine If I was an onagon And not a square So you've got to have more than four sides Is it possible? Anything is possible for Dr. Polygon Then the square says Hey, what are you doing? He says, I'm trying to find the square root of the hop hop He says, no, no, not that. And then he says, there, hold on. And then we'll go like, now I am a decagon and not a square. <laughs> That's my favorite part. And very rare. I won't complain again, cause my side's equal ten. I am a decagon and not a square. When I was just a square, I thought it wasn't fair, so I had surgery to my geometry. Now look at me. Na 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 na, not a boring square. Good job. Okay, the song that we sang today was the Polygon song, and I found that on YouTube, and I found it last year, and the kids to this day from last year are still singing it. It's a great way to pull in music for the musicians out there, the kids that learn through music. And yesterday we also watched a little YouTube video on somebody's class, and they, had, they were all different polygon shapes, and why a circle wasn't allowed to come into their polygon movie when the other shapes were. And just little things that you can pull off of YouTube. You know, obviously you have to preview it at home first, but that's the kind of things that we do as teachers at night. And then we bring in the best ones and show our kids. And it seems to stick in their mind. They're going home singing the song. A lot of kids went home, showed their parents. So they're going home and following through as well as what we do in the classroom. So go ahead and you can put your little shapes on your desk and report to your station. And I will be around to help. I guess the math curriculum today, we're learning not only how to complete it on paper, but why and how it relates to our everyday life. So the math that we're teaching here in class, we have to relate it to how the kids are going to use it in the real world and try to give them the word problems because a lot of the math is reading also. They have to read, be able to read the problems and understand the problems and they're so complex. The, the questions usually have three or four steps in them and you have to teach the kids how to think to answer the questions and doing that through fun ways is going to help. She has really cool ways of doing things because like other teachers they just do stuff. She has things that are really catchy, so we learn in a fun way. We don't just learn. We'll start with the PowerPoint. PowerPoint station is the technology station where the students are taking three-dimensional shapes from the world around us. And we read a book first about solid figures in, on the web. And we found the different buildings that have different shapes, 3D shapes. The kids are going online, finding the shapes, and then putting it into a PowerPoint. So not only are they looking at the world in a different way by looking at the shapes, but they're also learning technology. They're learning how to put, a lot of the kids didn't know how to put sound or animations into PowerPoints and how to turn pages and how to keep the backgrounds the same. So we're kind of teaching all of that while they're making PowerPoints. So in the future, they can use that for different presentations. I was at the PowerPoint and I was learning about 3D shapes. I really just was trying to do buildings. I did Taj Mahal. I did the Science Discovery Channel in Santa Ana, California. It's a cube and it's really cool. Um, I just really wanted to learn about these different shapes that you can actually go into one day. And I thought, well, if I learn about this now, maybe I can go there and be like an expert be like, oh, I researched about you, you guys are awesome. So I think that was really awesome that we got to do a PowerPoint on that. 
We have a bridge basher, the engineering center where the kids went to science lab with Mrs. Catanzari and they learned about the different bridges and what helps make a strong bridge. From there they brought that information back here, used the bridge basher app and then create a, their own bridge using toothpicks and marshmallows according to certain directions. And then we're going to actually take our bridges back to Science Lab and she's going to put weights on them, see who holds up the most. I was at the um, engineering station. Um, I was on Bridge Basher. It's an app on the iPad and it's really fun. You have to like kind of be a good engineer. Like you have to know how to support your bridge so it doesn't fall over. And the main part of it is trying to make your bridge the most sturdy because you're going to be putting one gram weights on it. And whoever holds the most weights um, wins. I would say all their names and like why, why would the ship do it? All right, let's see what you have so far, honey. We have a math center where the kids are using pattern blocks and they're creating a shape and they're doing it in private, not letting their friends see their shape. And then they make a frequency table. They have to label their shapes and do the tallies for it and then count up their tallies. And then they have to describe their pattern to their friends using following direction skills. And their friends try to build what they have hidden by using the math terms that we're looking for with the different geometric shapes. I was learning about geometric shapes. You build a pattern and then you like describe the pattern to your mates and then they and see who's the closest to your pattern. And then we have our science station, which is just different things in space because we've started Earth and Stars in our science curriculum. So they're looking at patterns in the sky. Some kids are choosing to do constellations. Some students are doing planets. And they're doing research, and making posters, and presenting those to the class as well. My station is a very fun station because I like space. And I picked out a really funny book, and I really like it. It's, it and I think all the stations are fun because like I think the bridges you get to build fun stuff and like the computers powerpoints it's it I think a lot of it has to do with technology and I really like technology so that's probably why I like it well I did a lot of research on stem just this year if you can integrate the curriculum using stem it's a fun way for kids to do because they have the technology that they're interested in included in almost every one of those stations I always say that math is art as well because you have to draw everything out. Math is in reading. You have to read a lot of the things, but anything that you're reading has to do with math. Science is very closely related to math. Math is in everything that we do. It's, it's going to the store, it's, it's walking, you know, building a bridge, and it's all of our careers that we're going to have in the future. We have to all know math and we have to be good at it, so we want to make it fun. The iMovie station, there was one iPad for each group. They went out together as a group and took pictures on our playground, throughout our school, in the classroom of different patterns and shapes. And with those patterns and shapes, they've created a movie and they put some sound to it. They put add text of what shapes or patterns they're seeing and then we've presented them to the class by putting them on the active board. I like math because it's like fun and it works your brain. We're so happy that we have the technology in our classroom because I really think that technology really helps us more than paper. It's so much faster. I'd be okay with that, but I think I like technology better because I think it's simpler and your hand doesn't get tired <laughs> writing all the sentences or whatever you have to do. Well, she puts videos, like math videos or reading videos, and we watch our math videos on the Activord, and she describes 
everything, <laughs> mostly on the active board. This is my 24th year, and I honestly don't know how I did without it. In fact, even with whiteboards, it's so different than the active boards that we have now, where you can just go right to the internet. Everything is at your fingertips. I honestly cannot imagine teaching without technology the way we have it today. And to be able to have iPads, one for every student in our school on a cart is just amazing that the kids have that experience. And everything that you need is on the internet. It's just amazing. It would take Earth 24 hours. Because in our day is 24 hours from one, one time to the next, like from today, 3 o'clock, till tomorrow, 3 o'clock, the same time. How long does it take Saturn to rotate one time all the way around? Only 10 hours. My teacher is a really nice teacher, and she's really organized. Like, she draws stuff on the board, like when we're going to recess, when we're going to lunch, when we're going to the computer lab, and that's what I like about her. I was excited when I found out that it was me uh, being the teacher of the year. We heard a little parade coming of a golf cart and a bunch of tambourines playing, and a whole parade came into the classroom, and it included my husband and my in-laws and some friends, and some fifth graders came in and other teachers and presented flowers. And I honestly feel that we're all teachers of the year here in Englewood. It's an amazing school to work at, and without the help of my colleagues, you know, we, we just all work closely together and we've just, we all have positive attitudes and it's just, it's an honor to be recognized by our colleagues. She's very creative and, well, she's the one that found this song and that's one of my favorite math songs and I think she, it's really cool and we get to have snack and, and she has like treasure boxes we can pick out of at the end of the day and we like get tickets. It's very fun. She is more face to face with people and she really lets them know. She doesn't just say, okay, you have to do this. She tells everybody in a separate way if they're, le if they're learning something else, if someone's smarter than someone else, they do different lessons. I love third graders because they still they're respectful, they're caring about others, they still love everything I say and choose for them. <laughs> and you can still get your hugs every morning and that kind of gets me going for the day and their little smiles and it's just a fun age. They still like to play but yet they're interested in learning. They're not all about play and not all about learning. They're, there's a mixture of both so we, we play a lot while we learn. Englewood Elementary, it's almost like this the best kept secret of Sarasota County. It is way, you know, the farthest school south. The whole community comes here and there's dinner, there are family mileage, there are reading for AR reading points, they have reading celebrations. There's just so many things that they do for the community that it really, not only do they make all the staff feel welcome just by working here, we have a wonderful principal. It's just a fun place to work, but everybody's serious about educating the children and making sure that they get to where they need to be. And I can't imagine working anywhere else. It's a great place to be.